uh, I'm here to ref mainly refute what he said. He brought up that John Locke said that nothing comes without consequences. Well, nothing does. And our position isn't that, but as the Gazette said in an editorial, no vote for Iowa's felons, poor choices have consequences, and it is wholly re reasonable to punish criminal behavior in a manner to, do, to the deed, but justice is not served, and so society does not benefit from denying basic respect and dignity to those who have paid for their infra infractions. What, they're, what our opponents are proposing is to deny the right to vote to all felons for the enti entirety of their life. So someone has gone to prison, has served their time, has come out a different person, a reformed person, and they're still saying they don't have the basic common sense to vote, whether or not they think Trump or Hillary should be president, or whether or not they think a simple bill should be on the law books. Um, and another, and another article by uh, by Brown from the New York Amsterdam News. However, he declared that far too often fundamental American right to vote is denied to ex felons. He said that voting is an in integral part of being a productive member of society, and that we should enc encourage ex felons to vote, not prohibit it, prohibit, prohibit them. When America was founded back in 1776, we founded ourselves because we were based on the idea that we didn't want to deny people a voice. We didn't want them to say to some person up in DC or across the sea and back in England to tell us what we can and can't do. That is basically what our opponents say they want to do with the ex felons They want to take away their voice. They want to say, because you've done this wrong, this one thing, we can't ever trust you again. Whereas some of the people that are having their rights stolen are people like Kelly Jo Griffin, who was convicted of a low-level drug offense. No, I'm not saying that's uh, something that shouldn't be, she shouldn't be punished for. However, she served her time and she, she came out on the other side after her punishment. And she didn't murder someone, she didn't take a life unwillfully, she didn't do anything to harm other people. She was a low-level offender, and she's still a felon, so she would still have her, her rights taken under my, our opponent's proposition. And as well, they, they say that, they, they claim that under the current, that we need this plan of action because under the current policies, they come out of jail and they just automatically get their right re returned. However, that in, in itself is also not true. In most states, they have to petition to get the, be given their right to vote back. So if someone, like they said, was a repeat offender and kept going back into prison for things again and again and again, that petition could be denied by someone who looked at their record and said, no, we, we no longer have the ability to trust you. However, someone that went went to prison once and came out on the other side and never offended the society again, would be able to have their rights returned because they did change their beliefs and they did become a better person. Which means that there is, and our opponents also said that there's no count, call for accountability in prison, in ex-felons or felons. There is a call for accountability. Every day there is a call for everyone to be accountable for their own self-worth, their own choices. And we're telling them that if our opponent's proposition were to be made law, we are basically telling them, we don't believe that you can be accountable. We don't trust you to make the right decision, therefore we need to take that part away from you. And say, we're the only people that can do this, you can't. Thank you.